everyone, welcome back for another exciting painting here with the Angry Easel. Today I thought we could paint um, a skyline with a lake or a river with a little bit of mountains um, and some trees. Um, this one should be pretty simple. I'll walk you step by step on how to do it. Um, you'll need your canvas, um, some water. Um, if you don't have a canvas, you can use cardboard, do it on a rock. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can do, um, even just using regular paper. Um, you'll need a brush and your primary colors in black and white. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we wanna do is paint um, the top half of our canvas with some white, okay? This is gonna give us a nice base layer and it's also going to give us a really cool pastel blue color. Okay, so you just wanna get about the top half covered with some white. Okay, we like to paint the tops and the sides of our canvas as well. All right, now I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue without washing my brush out. And I wanna get the top started with this blue color. Okay, I wanna get the sides and the top while I'm here. like mine a little streaky because it looks like there's some clouds in there. I'm even going to add a little bit more white to it just for some streaks. If you want to add some clouds in there, you can. Okay, and I'm going to make this um, where the sun is kind of setting here on the horizon. Um, so I'm going to actually add yellow to this, but I'm not going to do it until the blue is dry. Otherwise, we'll get this green kind of color. Okay, so now what we wanna do is grab some blue. We're gonna paint the bottom half of our canvas with blue, okay? I only have a little bit of white in my brush. I'm just gonna leave it there because I'm gonna end up adding some white down here anyway. Okay, so you wanna go all the way down. And I'm going to be adding um, some like boulders or kind of the sides of a hill kind of in these corners um, or on the sides. So it's okay if I don't get the blue, you know, perfectly all the way to the edge. All right. Okay. So I'm going to take some white and I'm going to kind of put some highlights in the middle of the painting. Again, I'm going to be putting kind of a hillside on either side in the sun setting. So I want to lighten this blue up a little bit in the middle. Okay, just by grabbing some white. Just lightening that up a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna rinse my brush out because I have a lot of paint in there. Dry it off really good. I'm gonna take some more white. And I'm gonna add um, kind of full on streaks without blending it in. So I'm using just the tip of my brush, that flat edge. To just add some of that in there. Now, if you have another brush laying around um, that's dry, okay, you can use that to smooth some of this. Just smooth some of it down. 
Okay, it helps when you use a dry brush. All right, so we still have some white streaks in there, but it's not as contrasted. All right, rinse that one out. <clears throat> Okay, we need to let this dry, give it hmm, 10 minutes or so, um, and we'll come back and we'll add in some of our yellow in our sky and the hills on the side, and then fix up some of our um, river or lake. Now that our background is dry, we can start to add some of our details to it. Okay, so I'm gonna take my big brush here and I'm gonna mix a little bit of white and yellow together, just to give us a lighter yellow. Okay, and I'm gonna start adding it in here and I'm going really lightly. If I push too hard, I'm gonna start pulling up some of that blue behind it and I'm gonna get a green, which is not what I want. Okay, so you're taking a little bit of white and yellow. Give us a nice, bright, but also calm kind of yellow. Okay, I'm going really lightly, being careful not to really mix with the blue. Put some streaks kind of up here. bring it down a little bit into a reflection just a little all right now I'm gonna grab just a little bit of red okay I'm not washing my brush out and keeping that paint in there just adding a little bit with that up here. Oops, that's too much. Okay. Okay, grab just a tiny bit of yellow to go over that red, make it a little bit more orange color. Again, I'm going just really light, making really light strokes. All right, go ahead and wash your brush out. Get your sky looking how you want it. Okay. Dry that really good. And I'm gonna take a smaller brush to make a little sun kind of in here. So I'm actually gonna use mostly white, just a tiny, tiny bit of yellow. Okay, and I'm gonna try and put it in the middle here. Okay, so I'm Making it like so it's setting on the horizon. Add a little bit more white to that here. Okay, get a good layer on there. Um, and when it dries a little bit, we can go over it again with some more white and that'll brighten it up. Wash that brush out. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with a little bit of, actually I'm gonna make a little bit of a gray. So not quite all the way black. I'm gonna do a dark gray here. And I'm gonna add hmm, maybe a little kind of hill over here. Okay, fill that in. 
Maybe it comes into the water a little bit. Okay, and for this, it doesn't really matter what brush you're using. Um, you just wanna go kind of slow because you're using a dark color. Once you put black on the canvas, you can't get it off really. It's really hard to cover if you change your mind. Okay, so just be careful with that. Okay, I kind of want to make it uneven a little bit, make it look a little rocky here. All right. Okay, mix a little bit more of that gray color. I really like that. Okay. Now I'm gonna come in on this side and um, add another, just kind of sketching it out a little bit here. Okay, kind of another hill, making it just a little bit lighter because it's closer to me. So this will give our painting a little depth. Okay, don't forget to do the sides with it. Okay, and fill that in. Remember these are hills by water, so they're not gonna have perfect edges, so don't worry if it's not a perfectly straight line. Okay, I'm gonna go in and kind of make bulges that come out. I'm gonna actually make a rock that just kind of comes out here. Okay, I'm gonna have it come all the way up to the bottom of our canvas here. I'm gonna make this one even lighter, just a little bit. Okay, you wanna get a nice layer on there and then you can go back in and add some more detail. Okay, maybe it comes out a little bit. into our water. I'm just making kind of just rough shapes that'll look like rocks here. that's back here too. Okay, so as you're adding some of these extra rocks in, you can vary the shades of the gray a little bit just to show that they're different rocks and they're not like all connected. That's a big boulder. Add a darker one down here. All right. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'll make a big one that comes down here. Fill that in. 
Remembering not to make it a perfect line. sides there. All right. Add a little streaks of white in there just to give it a little shadowing. Nothing super strategic, just putting some different colors in there. Okay. Do a little bit lighter. Maybe there's another kind of outcrop right here. When you're painting up close like this for a while, sometimes it helps if you stand up, you walk around, you come back, okay, and then you can kind of see what your painting needs, where it needs something, if it needs something, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, and while this gray and black kind of mixture is still wet, you can go through and add, you know, some black to the lighter gray or some white, you know, again to this darker stuff. Just add different variations in there. It's a nice part about doing sunsets or scenes that are Kind of at night or darker you don't have to add as much detail you can kind of go the silhouette method here all right I'm going to rinse my brush out again. I think I like how that looks there. All right, now I'm going to add some trees. So the thing with trees is, is we need the trunk and um, the tall, skinny part of the tree. Um, so depending on the type of brush you use, you're going to use a different technique. If you have a flat brush, you can use just the very um, straight tip edge of that. If you have a round brush, you want to get it to a point, okay, so that you can make really fine lines, okay? So as you can see, this brush, you know, isn't super skinny, but I can be very careful and bring it to a point and then just go really slow to make those straight lines like a tree, okay? I have kind of a smaller flat brush here that I'm gonna use. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of black and I'm gonna start by making um, my tree. Let's see, maybe I'll do one right here. But I'm gonna start at the top and slowly, and I'm kind of dabbing because I don't wanna go again too fast. Okay. Just kind of dabbing all the way down to my rocks here. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple of those. Maybe there's some shorter ones here. Maybe I'll make that one a little taller. Maybe there's one here on the edge. 
And because this is all black, um, when we're adding some of these trees in, it'll give the illusion that there's some that start kind of over here on this side of the rock. Okay, now when you're making these, um, the branches kind of on the trees, you want to use a dabbing motion. You don't want to slide, um, you don't want to rub, you don't want to make nice swift motions, you just want to dab things on there. Okay. So I picked up a little bit of black. I'm just going back and forth, almost like a zigzag pattern here. At the top, you wanna to make it nice and, and close to your line. And as you go down, you wanna broaden it. Okay, so you wanna dab just back and forth. Okay, sometimes branches are a little more curvier than others. So you can kind of curve it just a little bit. Make some branches thicker than others. Again, we're not sliding, we're not making nice broad strokes, we're just dabbing. Okay, this on there. If you are nervous to try this on your painting, you can use it on a paper plate, you can try um, on your napkin, you can just try doing that motion, okay? Or you can try doing it with a dry brush somewhere, okay? You just wanna kinda get used to that motion as you are um, building onto this tree. Okay, there we go. We're gonna do that here on these other trees. Make that one a little taller. I really like how that tree turned out. Okay, again, you're going back and forth until you get to the bottom. If you start out going too wide on the top, this one's okay, but I'm gonna show you what you can do. You can just make your tree a little bit taller and then kind of start again on the top. Do the same thing here. The key is to go pretty slow and just take your time with this. If you rush through it, you're not gonna like your trees very much. Oops. On the edge, it can get kind of dicey there, so be careful. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side of my river or lake here, okay? So I'm gonna start by doing a couple of these trees. That one's a little crooked, that's okay, we'll straighten it out. Okay, so I'm bringing these kind of over into the water so it looks like they're a little bit closer to us. Okay, we do wanna bring them over this boulder that's farther back, because that one's more in the water. Okay, maybe another one over here. So we're gonna do that same um, dabbing back and forth motion. Okay. Just going nice and slow. Some trees can be thicker than others or they could go down farther. Okay, again, the key is to just go slow. Painting from the side is a lot harder than I thought it would be. 
when I first started recording these videos. Everything turns out a little bit crooked, but that's okay because in nature, what tree is perfectly straight, right? Okay, I'm gonna do that same thing. That one's really thick here. Again, if you get too big at the top, you can always um, make your tree just a little bit taller. Okay, maybe that's as far as that one goes. If you get too much paint in your brush, you wanna just kind of squish that out. You can wash it um, or rinse it out, but just make sure you get it um, dry again because you don't want your paint dripping. done here. The fun part with this painting is you can kind of add whatever you really want. Um, you can add a little bit of green if you want to your trees. Um, you just want to make some blue and yellow. You can also add a little bit of white so you could make it kind of a snowy scene if you'd like to. Um, you can add some white to the top of your rocks. That would look really nice make it different seasons. That would be fun to do the same painting, but in all four seasons. Okay, I'd love to see that if anybody does that. Okay, these trees are close together here. Or you can just leave it like a silhouette. All right. I think I'm gonna call that good. Um, I kind of like how it's turning out. If you want, you can add a little bit more shading down here in your water, um, but I like how mine is there. The other thing you can do is take a little bit of white and go kind of along the bottom of your rocks that are in the water. And that just kind of helps line it and shows that it's, you know, the water's moving around and running up against your rocks. Again, you don't want it to be perfect here. Okay, um, wash it out. I'm gonna go over my sun just a little bit with some more white. Brighten it up just a little bit. I don't want it too bright. There we go. You can also add a few birds flying in your sky. Or just leave it the way it is. Okay, maybe I'll bring a tiny bit of white streaks down here. Again, you just want to go really light. Picked up some of that black accidentally. Right, and that's about it. Like I said, you can add some more things to your painting if you'd like to, um, some birds in the sky or um, something else going on here. Um, feel free to add other things and um, post your paintings. We love seeing them. Um, I really wanna see what you guys do with this painting. Um, so thanks for watching and join us next time.